Hey, I'm Jed. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, you could be my next subscriber. So make sure you go down below and do that. And if at the end of the video, you find any value, give it a big fat thumbs up. That stuff is super helpful in growing this channel and pushing to more people who would enjoy this sort of content. In my client work, I make a bunch of car related videos. I really wanted to take this sort of content to the so-called next level. Because when you're dealing with something as fast as a car, there's only so much you can do on sticks, on foot running next to something, or just, you know, hanging out the side of another vehicle. And that's why I got this guy. This is the Tilter Alien Arm. It's a hydraulic shock absorbing arm designed to rig cameras and gimbals like the RS2 to cars. The Alien Arm comes in a few different variants. You got sand kits and you got pro kits. I went for the pro kit with a V-mount battery option. The Pro Kit just gives you a bit of extra flexibility with some remote control options and some remote powering options. This will run you back about $1,800 US plus tax and depending where you buy it from in Australia, about $2,800 to $3,200. So if you grab yourself an alien arm, this doesn't just solve all your problems immediately. You do need to have a few different essentials to use this thing. You're gonna need a gimbal, you're gonna need a camera, probably a monitor and a HDMI cable at minimum. So if you're starting out from scratch, this is gonna be a pretty expensive endeavor. Throughout this video, I may refer to the alien arm as being cheap. Now, I don't want you to assume that I'm loaded because trust me, I'm not. My gear has me bro. But in comparison to what these arms have traditionally cost and still do cost, this is pretty cheap. So for reference, things like the Flow Cine Black Arm, it's about 10 grand Australian. Now that's made to put the Ronin 2, not the RS2 on the end of that. That's another 11, 12 grand Australian. So as you can see, something that's 3,200 Australian compared to 22 grand Australian, it's a big difference. Granted, I know that they are for heavier setups, but that's always kind of been the standard. So when I say two to $3,000 Australian is cheap, that's what I'm talking about. The Tilter Alien Arm mounts the cars via these dovetail plates that get suction cup to the cars. Each cup can hold a significant amount of weight and I've had zero issues so far, but trust me when I say every single time I use these things, I still shit myself. God, this coffee smells like shit. It just feels so wrong to trust so much money and so much weight to suction. It's a bit nutty. After this video, have a look on YouTube. There is tons of videos where people put these things through absolute hell and they just stay on there. But in my head, I just have this conflicting argument. I'm like, surely suction can't do that. And it does. If you don't like the idea of mounting to the car via suction, or perhaps you want to mount somewhere where suction is just really not an option, you can pick up the Predator clamp just like I did. The only problem, it's been lost in the post for four months and I still don't have one. Sounds broken. Most likely, sir. I'll bet it was something nice though. The way the Predator clamp works, it attaches to the back of the alien arm. You don't need any of the dovetail plates or suction cups. This just allows it to clamp onto some speed rail. So what I'd plan to do is pick up something like the Cine milled towable hitch. This goes into where the towable normally goes in your car and it has some clamps to clamp down that speed rail and run it up to the back windshield of the car. The alien arm then attaches to that speed rail via the Predator clamp and all of a sudden you've got a nice setup. My personal plan is to also use the two small suction cups with that single dovetail, clamp that to the back of my windshield and have a bit of like a fastener around the top of that speed rail, to just mitigate any of that sort of vibration. But when that comes, I'll try that out and who knows, I might need to do a follow-up video in like 12 months or something. Another massive pro to the Predator and speed rail setup is it's gonna be a much quicker install. Every single time you wanna take it on and off, everything is much quicker. Setting up the suction cups is pretty simple once you've had a little bit of practice. It's important to note, however, that some cars are better to mount onto than other cars. It just depends on the curves and the angles of the car. And if you've got two different panels that join together and there's a little seal that maybe some air can leak out of, you don't wanna mount over stuff like that because that could cause your suction cup to come loose and cost you a bit of money. Unfortunately, my car on the rear, which is where I'm gonna do the majority of my filming from, offers me limited ways that I can attach this to the car. And that's one of the main reasons I do wanna pick up the Predator clamp, but I also think it'll give me a more stable image. This is straight out the box how it comes from Tilter. And if you have a look on YouTube, most people that operate alien arms have modded them in some sort of way. They've changed cables, added different isolators, or they've added springs, anything that will help dampen the movement. Now, I think the main reason for this is this doesn't give you any sort of lateral give. And that's the main reason for getting shaky footage with the alien arm. It gives 100% of that responsibility to mitigate the side to side movement to the gimbal. And depending on what setup you've got on the RS2 at 80K an hour, that can be a bit of an ask. With higher end models and the new competition to this one, which is the Mob Max N2 Arm Mini, you actually get built into the head isolation that will go front and back and side to side. That's pretty cool. 
that's going to give you a much stronger chance of mitigating any bumps and bruises that the road throws at you. The Move Max arm that I mentioned did come out since I purchased this one. If I was buying today, I'd probably lean that way purely because I don't want to tinker and mess with something that I've just purchased. I don't want to avoid warranties or have any issues. So I kind of like the way that that isolates side to side and front to back straight out of the box. But that arm is also almost double the price. It's 5,200 Australian. So you take the good with the bad. But with more testing, more balancing, and using lighter lenses so the gimbal doesn't have to work as hard, we're able to mitigate those bumps and bruises a fair amount. I think I'll get much better time at really balancing this arm and getting it locked in. Because I've had a few moments where the arm is supposedly balanced, but I've just had a few jitters in the footage. But when the arm is actually balanced properly, which is highly crucial, the image is highly usable. Most of the time when I'm making car videos, I'm looking for clips that are about three to five seconds long. So if there's some jitters here and there, it's not the end of the world, we should still be able to get some highly usable footage. This rig is isn't just limited to shooting car videos. You might have a client who, maybe they're a shoe company, maybe there's a marathon runner in the video and you can't guarantee you can run next to your gimbal without shaking and keeping that thing still. Chuck the alien arm on the back of the car, have the runner running behind the car, happy days. Also because of the alien arm's unique stick it anywhere design, you also have endless opportunities to shoot people inside the car. Even though my mind doesn't want to trust the suction, it's that stick it anywhere attitude that comes with a design like this that allows you to capture a versatile range of shots of people inside the cabin while the car is driving. Your creativity and your mind is really the limit with a device like this. It's really important to remember that when you are rigging anything to the outside of a vehicle, you do want to make sure there's safety straps and tethers in place. This just means A, you're not going to lose your gear if it does come off and there is an accident, but more importantly, the person behind you, they're not gonna get seriously injured or even killed if something does go wrong. Something I'm really excited about in the future is not actually mounting this to a car, but it's mounting to a bike. There's loads of different places where you can't take a car, but you can take a bike. I think that just opens up a real wide range of different opportunities for new and creative shots. Whenever I get the chance to use this on the front of a bike, there's two things I would love to do. Go ripping through a forest. I think there'll be some really cool shots there, but also do like a fake chase scene through traffic. I think that'd be really cool. That's the car you got? But we're not talking about hypotheticals. We're talking about what I actually do. So let me walk you through my setup and how I track vehicles. So this is the handheld device that goes inside the car. It's connected to the camera and the gimbal via cable. So got a small rig handle on the side. This is our control there. So when I move the joystick, you see the gimbal moves as well. I've got the Ninja V here. So this is so I can record raw video out of the A7S3. And this is my phone here. This has the Monitor Plus app, which is if you use a Sony camera like the A7S3, the best app you can get. So this changes all my camera settings. This monitors my video and then my toggle on off for my recording. All powered by a V-mount on the back. I've got a D-tap into the back of the Ninja and then just a simple USB-C into this uh, remote control. Then as we go into the gimbal, obviously you've got the A7S III, whatever lens you want on there. And then the all important Tilter Hydra Alien Arm. This is the setup. Now, one thing I didn't mention while I was actually doing the recording of the video, anytime you put a camera on a gimbal, a tripod, you should turn off any sort of IBIS. The good thing about turning off IBIS in the A7S III, because it's got gyro stabilization, it saves that data. So when you take this footage and you go home and you put it through Sony Catalyst Browse, you can actually then further stabilize through gyroscopic data rather than that sensor kind of counteracting your movement. So that's the setup. This gets fed through the back window of the car into the front seat so I can be sitting there while someone else drives and playing around and getting the shots we want. But that is the simple setup for the Hydra Alien Arm that we use. So as you can see, there's a fair bit that goes into this and it's a minimum two person operation. You need a driver and you need yourself to operate that camera. But if you're filming another vehicle, you also need a third person to drive that second vehicle. Bringing a team on set and having all this gear rigged up externally instead of just hanging out the window can look really good and make you look serious in front of a client. But remember, it's not what your gear looks like, it's what your films look like. And if it looks good, it is good. But nevertheless, there are some clients and some budgets that come with the expectations that this is the minimum sort of standard of gear that you're gonna rock up to set with. There are some clients who, if you just lean out the window and start shooting, they're gonna be like, who did we hire? But more importantly, there's no shot ever worth risking your life for. If you get the best shot in the world, but you're not there to view it, what was the point? Stay safe. I'm not gonna tell you to buy one because if you need a car rig, you know who you are. What I'm gonna tell you is what to expect. It's a nice rig and you'll get some really good shots, but you'll get even better shots if you're willing to tinker and customize your rig. If you're using bigger, heavier cameras and you need to use a Ronin 2 or a Moti Pro, then you need to think bigger. This is not gonna be the rig for you. But if you're on a smaller budget, you're on a small team or you're an indie filmmaker, 
this is a pretty decent option. Remember the alien arm is cheap for what it is. And just cause you don't shoot cars doesn't mean you can't utilize this. With your creativity, the possibilities that you can use this rig for are pretty well endless. In some cases, because of how much this actually costs, if you already have the gimbal, the camera, the monitor, if you need to use one for two weeks, it might actually be cheaper to buy it and sell it than it would be to rent it for two weeks. All in all, I think this is a pretty good unit and if you keep your expectations in line with how much this costs compared to what it's competing against, you can't really go wrong and you can't really be too mad. I think I've got some really good shots out of it and I'm pretty happy so far. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. And if you feel like being an absolute legend, please give this a big fat thumbs up and subscribe. Best bit, it's free. And if you regret it in two months or so, you can just unsubscribe, I'll never know. Go listen to Aliens Is This by Blink-182. I'll see you next time. Bye!